welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course on samasa as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam वंदेहम योखिलं जगत् चरीकर्ति वरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत् चरीकर्ति वरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया In this course we are focused on the Tatpurusha Samasa and we have seen several features of the Tatpurusha Samasa We said that there are four types of samasas in Sanskrit Avyay Bhav Tatpurusha Bahuvrihi and Dvandva stated in this particular order in the Ashtadhyayi the core text of paninian grammar and also the paninian grammatical tradition we said that panini has composed a number of sutras in order to explain the features of the tatpurusha samasa in comparison with the sutras he has composed to explain the features of other samasas Tatpurusha Samasa also has got quite a lot of varieties subtypes Vibhakti Tatpurusha Karma Dharaya Ekadeshi Samasa Nay Tatpurusha Gati Tatpurusha as well as Upapada Tatpurusha and we have already studied these types of Tatpurusha Samasas in some detail we have also studied the process of derivation of the samasa where the laukika vigraha vakya plays a very crucial role as it shows us the interrelatedness between the padas vyapeksha lakshana samarthya namely samprekshitartha and sambaddhartha and then the process of compounding begins where we have alaukika vigraha vakya after which a samasanta pratyaya is added then subluk takes place purva pada karya in the form of pumbad bhava or other morphological modifications etc takes place and then swara karya also takes place accent related operation in this particular lecture we shall focus on the swara karya or the accent related operation in paninian grammar compositionality works also in the process of compounding in the paninian grammar the compositionality works at three levels artha shabda as well as swara in the other course introduction to paninian grammar we have shown that the compositionality of artha shabda and swara work in correspondence the compositionality of artha and the compositionality of shabda and the compositionality of swara are all interrelated so the compositionality of swara or accent 
also continues to work in the process of compounding. So if x and y are two separate and independent elements in a sentence, however they are interrelated, they are independent and separate because of three factors. We have constantly been saying this, artha, shabda as well as swara. Each one has got these three features, but they are interrelated and on the basis of the interrelation, if the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge these units together and form one unit as an output, now the features change and now there aren't two features, independent and separate, but there is only one feature. There is only one unit and this one unit will get the swara, the shabda and the pada in that reverse order, the features. So, aika arthya, aika padya and aika swarya, these are the three features that will be the features of x, y as one unit. So, accents of constituents are taken into account while deciding about the accent of the newly formed merged unit. And in the process of merging, only one of them is retained as the accent of the newly formed or newly merged unit. Now by default, the accent of the semantic head should be retained. That seems logical. But we see that this principle is followed somewhat loosely by the speakers of Sanskrit. There are several exceptions where the semantic non-head also retains the accent as far as the samasa is concerned. Let us study this sutra 61223 samasasya meaning the final vowel in the compound is accented. This is the by default rule. It means, I repeat, the final vowel in the compound is accented. This is also an Adhikara Sutra which governs the entire 6.2. Mind you, this is the last sutra in 6.1. So it governs the entire 6.2. So, in a nutshell, we can say that the accent on compounds is stated in 6.2. And this sutra, Samasasya, which means that the final vowel in the compound is accented, is the only sutra in 6.1.2.23 that deals with the accent of Samasa. But this is a very general, very broad sutra applicable to even the Tatpurusha Samasa. So here is a concrete example, but before going further, we would like to go through the markings of the accent and the accent overall. So when we say that the compound is accented, what we are referring to is the udatta accent in the compound. As is made clear in the other course, there are three swaras which are talked about in the Paninian grammar, udatta, anudatta and svarita in the present context. Now, following the generally acceptable Rigvedic practice, we also mark the udatta without any sign. So, in Raja Purusho Gachati, this show does not have any sign. Whereas the rest, each and every vowel, has got a horizontal bar below. So, the one which is unmarked is an Udatta. 
Rajapurusho Gachati. This is an unmarked. This girl has got a vowel a, which is anudatta, but this anudatta comes immediately after an udatta, and therefore this is shown as swarita with a vertical bar on top. The rest are anudattas, which are shown with a horizontal bar below and so all these four they are shown to be the anudattas. Now if we go to the laukika vigraha vakya radnya purusho gachati we see that there are two words radnyaha and purushaha who which are semantically linked but they do have their independent separate status and as is clear radnyaha has got ra unmarked and in purushaha pu is unmarked as well as sho is unmarked now in radnyaha ra is unmarked to, which indicates that this ra is the udatta swara dnyaha is marked as anudatta but that is primarily because Radnyaha is immediately followed by Purusho in which Pu is Udatta. So an Udatta vowel is always preceded by an Anudatta marking and Anudatta vowel. And therefore in Radnyaha, even though Ra is Udatta and the Anudatta Dnya therefore should become a Swarita because Pu which follows is an udatta. So dnya is shown as anudatta and not a swarita. And that is why radnyaha has got these peculiar accent markings. Ra as udatta and dnyaha as anudatta. In purusho, pu is marked without any sign and show is also marked without any sign. Now show comes immediately after the vertical bar which is the sign of a swarita and therefore show is also an anudatta which is unmarked. But pu is marked as udatta and so there is no sign primarily because it is preceded by an anudatta and it is followed by an anudatta which is converted into a swarita. And there are sutras on the basis of which all these modifications do happen. The one thumb rule that we follow is that anudattam padam ekavarjam. In one unit of a pada, there is one udatta. So the rest is anudatta. The anudatta that precedes is shown with the horizontal bar below the letter and the anudatta that follows gets converted into a swarita which is shown with a vertical bar on top of the letter. The anudattas that follow the swarita in this manner are not given any mark and they are left without any mark as such. So in the sentence Radnya Purusha Gachati, which is the Laukika Vigraha, Pu is the final Udatta in the entire sentence. And therefore Ru, which is an Anudatta that comes immediately after the Udatta, is marked as Svarita. After that, Sho is Anudatta. And Gachati has got all the three vowels marked as Anudatta. And therefore, now Gachati remains unmarked, Sho also remains unmarked. So there are four Anudattas that follow Aswarita. All this is very pertinent in understanding the accent of the Samasa. 
सो इन दिस केस राज्ञ पुरुषो गच्छति वेर वी हैव राज्ञ प्लस पुरुष प्लस गच्छति एंड वेर वी हैव राजन प्लस न प्लस पुरुष प्लस सु एंड राजन एज अ प्रातिपदिक इज ऑल्सो शोन विद द मार्किंग ऑफ द एक्सेंट वेर रा इज उदात्त एंड ज इज अनुदात्त दैट फॉलोज एन उदात्त सो ज इज शोन विद अ वर्टिकल बार ऑन टॉप सो राजन हैज गॉट रा उदात्त एंड पुरुष हैज गॉट पु उदात्त एंड रू एज स्वरित सो राजन प्लस नस प्लस पुरुष प्लस सु द समास टेक्स प्लेस सो द प्रतिपदिक सौज्ञ टेक्स प्लेस सुपो धातु प्रतिपदिक जो अप्लाइज सो वी हैव राजन प्लस जीरो प्लस पुरुष प्लस जीरो सो राजन प्लस पुरुष नाउ न एट द एंड ऑफ राजन इज डिलीटेड एंड सो वी हैव राज पुरुष नाउ वेन राज एंड पुरुष आर मर्ज टुगेदर ऑब्वियसली पुरुष विच इज द सेमेंटिक हेड इज एक्सपेक्टेड अदरवाइज टू रिटेन इट्स एक्सेंट बट नाउ समासस्य कम्स इन टू प्ले एंड से इज दैट डू द फाइनल वॉवल ऑफ दिस समास एक्सेंटेड दैट मीन्स डू द उदात्त ऑन द फाइनल वॉवल ऑफ दिस समास एंड देर फर इन राजपुरुष अ एट द एंड ऑफ राजपुरुष इज एक्सेंटेड एवरीथिंग एल्स बिकम्स अनुदात्त सो ऑल द फोर वॉवल्स दैट प्रिसीड दे आर शोन टू बी अनुदात्त and therefore when we add the su pratyaya after the pratipadika rajapurusha and then su pratyaya has got no accent at all so we have rajapurusha with the final vowel accented and gachati has got no vowel accented and therefore when gachati comes immediately after rajapurusho that g which is an anudatt is converted into a swarita this is how samasasya works and this is how the accentuation within a compound will work so samasasya overrides the general thumb rules and the final vowel becomes accented in rajapurusha similarly nadyaha ghoshaha the sound of the river and so we have nadi plus nas plus ghosha plus su nadyaha ghoshaha so nadyaha has got na as anudatta marked dyaha is not marked and that is conveying us that dyaha is udatta in ghoshaha gho is not marked sh is marked with a vertical bar on top so sh is the swarita and so gho is the udat so now in nadyaha ghoshaha we have nadi plus nas plus ghosha plus su as the alaukika vigraha so samasa saudnya takes place pratipadika saudnya takes place so po dhatu pratipadika jo ho applies so we have nadi plus ghosha nadi is finally accented that means the final e is udat and so it is unmarked and preceded by an anudat shown with a horizontal bar below ghosha has got initial accent which means the initial o is udat so sh is anudat but because this anudat follows an udat so it becomes a swarit ghosha now when the samasa happens the sutra samasasya comes into play and declares that the word nadi ghosha will have the final vowel namely a in sh accented and so all the other vowels are shown to be anudattas with a horizontal bar below each and every letter this is how the sutra samasasya works and overrides the accent available through the thumb rule now with regards to the accent of the tatpurusha samasa it is important for us to study this one sutra 
there are many sutras and we won't be able to cover all the sutras in this course it may require a separate course to deal with the accents as that is a very complicated matter subject matter for study however in this course we shall study this one particular sutra related to the accent of the tatpurusha samasa this is 622 and the sutra reads tatpurushe तुल्यार्थ तृतीया सप्तमी उपमान अव्यय द्वितीया कृत्या आई रिपीट तत्पुरुषे आई रिपीट तत्पुरुषे तुल्यार्थ तृतीया सप्तमी उपमान अव्यय द्वितीया कृत्या नाउ इन दिस सूत्र देर आर टू पदर्स तत्पुरुषे इज सेवन स्लैश वन विच मीन्स इन द तत्पुरुष कंपाउंड and tulyartha tritiya saptami upamana avyaya dvitiya krityaha is 1/3 words continued are purva padam the first member of the compound and also prakritya prakritya means by its own form so the meaning of the sutra is the following in the tatpurusha compound the first member which is tulyartha etc up to kritya remains by nature which means retains its accent as the accent of the finally derived compound output i repeat in the tatpurusha compound the first member which is tulyartha up to kritya remains by nature that means it retains its accent as the accent of the compound so tulyartha up to kritya these are the purva padas and the uttara pada is not mentioned and in this case the accent of tulyartha up to kritya is retained and this becomes the accent of the entire samasa which is an exception to samasasya 61223 which states that the final vowel of the compound gets accented now let us study the environments stated in 6.2.2 one by one and look at the examples first one is tulyartha in the sense of similar this word tulyartha is referring to the samasa prescribed by the sutra kritya tulyakhya ajatya 2168 this sutra prescribes the karma dharaya samasa so we have the examples tulya shvetah so here we have tulya as one word and shveta as the other word both having independent accents and by samasasya the vowel a in t in shveta would get accented but 622 says that tulya will retain its own accent and that will be the accent of the samasa so tulya is initially accented which means that tu is not marked lya is the anudatta remaining one and this anudatta is coming immediately after an udatta therefore it is marked as swarita with a vertical bar on top of the letter and now this udatta which is tu this becomes the utswara of the entire samasa so all the other vowels become anudatta now when all of them become anudatta shve and t has got two vowels which come after the swarita mention on lya and therefore they are unmarked now tulya shvetah has got two as an udatta lya as the swarita shve and t as the anudatta unmarked tulya shvetah 
and similar is the case with tulya lohitaha and also tulya mahan now in the word sadrukshvetaha the initial vowel is accented so we have s unmarked and druk becomes anudhat so dru is an anudhat but this ru comes immediately after an udhat therefore it is converted into a swarit and a vertical bar is given on top of dru now when this is joined with shvetaha the accent of sadruk is retained which is the initial accent initial udhat vowel and so sadruk shvetaha has got the initial vowel udhat and therefore everything else is anudhat and now dru which comes immediately after s gets converted into a swarit but a in shve and a in t remains anudhat however these two anudhatas are following a swarit and therefore these two anudhatas they also remain unmarked but they are anudhatas as far as the word sadrusha shvetah is concerned the vowel ru is udhat and therefore in sadrusha s is anudhat and sh is anudhat now the anudhat that precedes this udhat ru is marked with the horizontal bar below so s is anudhat and sh which follows the udhat ru is shown with the vertical bar on top so in sadrusha s is anudhat ru is udhat and sh is swarit now this sutra 622 says that in sadrusha shvetah the accent of sadrusha will retain its own form and so the accent of sadrusha will become the accent of the compound sadrusha shvetah so in sadrusha shvetah ru remains udhat and everything else becomes anudhat now shvetah has got both the vowels which are now anudhatas however they are following a swarit and therefore they remain unmarked similar is the case with the next condition trutiya so trutiya refers to the words ending in the third triplet and the compound is prescribed by the sutra trutiya tatkritarthena gunavachanena 2130 and in this case shankula khandaha is the output but this shankula khandaha will retain the accent of shankula which is the final vowel a being udhat and so everything else becomes anudhat so shang and ku these two elements have got a and u as vowels they are anudhat as kh and a they are also kh and d they also have vowels a uh, a uh, they are also anudhatas but the vowels that precede the udhat they are marked with the horizontal bar below and the vowel which is anudhat which comes immediately after the udhat is marked with the vertical bar on top and so in shankula khanda you have a as udhat a uh, and u as anudhat and the following a uh, in kh also as swarit similarly in kiri kanaha the word kiri retains its udhat accent and that is the final udhat vowel so ki becomes anudhat and ka is marked with swarit the next environment is that of saptami referring to the words ending in the seventh triplet and referring to the compound prescribed by the sutra saptami shaundaihi to 140 so we have the examples aksha shaundaha and pana shaundaha in aksha shaundaha ksh is udhat and that becomes the accent of the entire samasa and so a is anudhat and shau is marked with swarit in pana shaundaha pa is udhat and therefore na is shown as swarit in shound they are both anudhatas and 
because they follow the Swarita, they remain unmarked. The next environment is Upamana, which means the standard of comparison. Now the compound is prescri prescribed by the Sutra Upamanani Samanya Vachanaihi to 155 and the examples are Shastri Shyama, Kumudashyeni and Hamsa Gadgada. Shastri Shama retains the accent of Shastri which is the final Udatta that is E as Udatta and therefore Sh is marked with a horizontal bar below indicating that this A is Anudatta and Sha is marked with a vertical bar on top indicating that this A is Swarita and Ma is not accented because this Anudatta comes immediately after a Swarita. Similar is the case with Komodashyeni where the final vowel is accented and so the previous vowels are Anudattas and the following vowel is shown to be a Swarita and the next vowel is unmarked but that is because it is following a Swarita. In Hamsa Gadgada, Hamsa has got the final vowel Udatta namely Sa, A and so her is shown to be Anadatta and Gadgada has got G which is marked as Swarita. The next condition is Avyaya. Avyaya means an indeclinable and the compound referred to is the pun prescribed by Nai as well as by Kugati Pradayaha. Nai is 226 and Kugati Pradayaha is 2218. So the compound is Abrahmanaha in which Nai is accented and everything else is unaccented. So A is Udat and everything else is Anadat. So A which comes immediately after A is marked with Swarit. And so Abrahmanaha has got only one mark, a vertical bar over Bra. In Avrushalaha, once again, A is marked with Udat. So there is no mark and the remaining ones therefore become Anudat. And so Vru is marked with a Swarita because it follows an Udatta. In Nishkav Shambhi and Nirvaranasihi, the initial vowel is Udatta, so there is no marking. And Kau and Va, they are marked with Swarita sign and the rest of them are not marked. They are Anudattas without any sign. In Ati Khatvaha and Ati Malaha, Ati retains its own accent which is the initial A and Ti therefore becomes the Swarita and Khatvaha and Malaha they are marked with no sign which indicates that they and they are following a Swarita therefore they are Anudattas without any marking. The next environment is Dvitiya which means words ending in the second triplet. And the compound prescribed is by the Sutra Atyanta Sanyogecha to 129. So the examples are Muhurta Sukham. So Muhurta is the Purvapada and this is finally accented and so everything else becomes Anudatta. So the first two vowels are marked with the horizontal bar below and the next vowel Su in Su is marked with a vertical bar indicating that it is a Swarita. Similar is the case with Muhur Taramaniyam where once again the final vowel in the Purvapada is accented and everything else is Anudat. In Sarvaratra Kalyani because of the Samasanta Pratyaya also the final vowel in Sarvaratra is Udat therefore it is not marked and so everything else becomes Anudatta. Now the Anudatta that precedes this Udatta is shown with the horizontal bar below and all the vowels that precede are also shown similarly. The Anudatta that follows is shown with the Swarita sign and the Anudattas that follow this Swarita, they are left unmarked. Similar is the case with Sarvaratra Shobhana. 
Finally, the environment is that of Kritya. Kritya is the title of suffixes stated by the Sutra Kritya, 395 onwards. And the compound is prescribed by the Sutra Kritya Tulyakya Ajatya to 168. Now in Paniya Shitam, Paniya is a Kritya word and therefore it retains its own accent which is the E which is Udatta. Now because E is Udatta, A which precedes and Y which follows, they are Anudattas and Pa is marked with the horizontal bar and Y is marked with the vertical bar on top. In Shitam, both of the vowels are Anudatta but because they follow a Swarita, they are left unmarked. Similar is the case with Haraniya Churnam, where E is Udatta and everything else is Anudatta. The accent is a very important feature noted down by Paninian grammar on parts of the speech in detail. The accent compositionality corresponds with that of the meaning and also the word form. The newly derived compound form gets one accent. This is one of the constituent accents in many cases, but in many cases it is also something over and above something new, indicating the non-compositional nature of the compound, akhandatva. We can also say by way of summarization namely that given x ax, where ax indicates the accent and AY also indicates the accent. So given X AX plus Y AY as the accent input, the outputs could be described as XY AX or XY AY or XY AZ where Z is a completely different, completely new accent stated by some other sutra and this indicates the non-compositionality of the Samasa. These are the texts referred to. Thank you.